So let's take a moment to go over the most important bits of what are in the kit, which are the instructions, the blue pill itself, and the programmer. And then you're gonna to need to bring your own computer and your own USB micro cable. So let's take a look at that for just a second. If we dump out the contents here, well, we've got our two jumpers. We're gonna set those jumpers aside. We're not gonna need those right away. And then we've got this pin rail here. We're gonna put that aside. What we need to do is just take a look here and kind of familiarize yourself with the blue pill. So you can see along the top, we've got G, G, 3, 3, R, B12, da, 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 lots of Bs and then some As, and then we get to some Cs, and then we get back to more Bs again, As, and then 5V, G, and 3, 3. And then what's this one up here? Is that a 3V, 3? I actually can't see what that's supposed to be. Anyway, we'll look at it on the piece of paper. So we've got our USB micro, which is gonna supply power. We've got a lovely reset button. We've got a place where the jumpers go. That's the microcontroller itself. And all the traces that are coming out from the microcontroller are going to the different pins, which we can assign to different functionalities to do different things. There is a clock here. That's an eight megahertz clock. And then we've got, I think this is a, a power controller, but I'm not 100% sure. And then we've got some LEDs. One LED is power, the other is user controllable which is also called PC-13. And then uh, it is very important because even in the same batch of blue pills, we can get different pinouts. Now you can't really read, let me see if I can get this at the right angle. Now, if you're lucky, you can read what it says underneath of those pins, but if you're not lucky like me, you're gonna have to flip around on the back. And thank goodness those are easy to read. So notice you've got 3V3, that means 3.3 volts, SWIO, SW clock, and ground. So hopefully you can see that right there. And then we've got some resistors that are marked with R, capacitors that are marked with C, and then a number for both of those. And then I think we've got another little power transistor over there. This is the blue pill, that's all that it is. And then you've got your programmer. Now it's very important that we get this matched up with what's on here, and again, I'm showing you one, this may not be what you see on your board. It's important to focus on what you see on your board and your programmer rather than what you see mine have, although hopefully they're the same. They should be, they're from the same batch. So you've got uh, reset, da 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 da. None of this matters except for 3.3 volt we care about, ground we care about, SWIO, and this one they put an extra letter, SWDIO, D is for data, IO for input output, SW clock. So that's what's important. You've also got these jumper cables and everybody's gonna have different colors because they're just cut off of uh, a ribbon. So they're just adjacent jumpers taken from a, a big ribbon of jumpers. So the color's not important, but it is important that you match the right color to the right place. So I'm gonna show you how this is done. Now I like to use certain colors to mean certain things for myself. So purple is close to red and I like to use red for power. I'm gonna, whoop. I'm gonna take my purple and I'm gonna attach it to 3.3 just because that's the way that I like to help myself remember. And then I like to use green for data. So I'm gonna go ahead and my SW input output, I'm gonna attach that to green because that's easy for me to remember. And then I like to use either black or white for ground. So I'm gonna attach the white to ground which leaves blue for clock. So I'm attaching my blue to clock and I'm attaching my white to ground. So now I've got those plugged in and I got to match them on this side. So the way that this is read out is one, two, three, four. So it's left to right, top to bottom. So number two is this one on the top right here. That is software clock. What color did I have my software clock? Well, I remember that I like green for data. So it is green. Uh, oh, nope, sorry. Uh, Clock is not data, clock is clock, and I made my clock blue. So green is plugged into data, that's SWDIO. Blue, I'm gonna plug into clock. White is ground, and there's multiple grounds on this, so I could pick either one, but I'm gonna pick the one that's adjacent. So let me just slide that in there. I'm actually gonna slide these two in together. So there's all four of my 
jumpers are connected. And let's just double check because what we don't want to do is we don't want to fry our little board. So the most important thing is that power and ground are in the right place. So white for me is ground. Double check in that. Purple for me is power. All right, let's double check here. On the right side, 3.3 power is purple. And it's the fourth one down, number eight. And then ground is number six. That's right above it. So that looks right. Notice that the, the order of this, you know, is not, it's not in the same order. So it's important to read what's labeled, even if what's labeled is different from what I have. Power should be easy to identify. Ground should be easy to identify, even if it only says G or something like that. Um, and what we want to make sure we don't do, though, is we do not want to connect the 5 volt power. So 5 volt power is the last pin. I connected the 3 volt power. So we're good there. Now this, in just a moment, we'll be able to plug it into the laptop. And most of these will come pre-installed with a Blinky program. So for most of them, what's going to happen when we plug them in is that uh, before we even program it, it's, uh, there's already going to be a program on there, and that light's just going to start to blink below power. So PC 13, right there. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into power while I'm uh, not resting it on the metal. And we see the power light comes on. And then it's got a blinky program on it. So you can see that there. The green light's going blink, 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 blink. So that's just the default blinky program. And in just a minute, we'll get back on the computer. And then we are going to load our own program and it's going to change the way that this blinks. Now, if you're looking at yours and you don't have a blinky light, that's okay. Some of them might not have been programmed or they might have been recycled from a previous kit and they might have a different program on them that maybe doesn't run right. What you definitely should have is the power light. If you don't have the power light, then it may be, now these jumpers are very finicky. So you might wanna try a different cable or you might wanna wiggle the connections a little bit. What you absolutely wanna do is make sure that the wires are correct between the programmer and the blue pill. Now I'm gonna show you another trick. What we have here, is a micro USB cable. A lot of times people think of this as the Android phone charger before Android switched to USB-C. So you can see it's kind of got that rounded a little bit on the bottom shape. So we're gonna plug this in here. And I've actually got the programmer still attached on the other side, but it's no longer plugged into power. And I'm gonna plug this USB into my computer, not the programmer. And this is another good sanity check. So here you can see red light came on and it started running its blinky program. So a uh, good way to test if something's wrong with the cables or the connection here uh, with the power is just to make sure that it works with the USB cable and vice versa. Could happen either way. If you got it powered on, congratulations. The most important thing is, is done, especially if it's connected to the program and you got it powered on, then you're good to go.